Hey guys, it's Janet Vosky. Today I want to talk a little bit more about the writing process and how I actually get to writing my poems and my thought process behind it. I had a couple of people ask me how I actually write my poetry. I'll also read an entry from my latest poetry and prose book titled X and I might do a line by line description of the reason why I wrote the way I did which could possibly help you in your journey through writing poetry. So, let's begin. Firstly, I want to say that the way everyone thinks, writes, creates is very different. So this is the way that in my experience this works for me and my writing. Essentially, I think the main thing to remember is that if you are thinking it, write it down. If something pops up into your head, write it down. Because what your writing is doing is therapeutic and it's not only going to help you in the way you think, but it's also going to develop over time when you reread what you've already written. So what I do is as soon as something pops into my head, banana smoothie, <laughs> I'll add that to my note. And not only that, but I'll add to the note what I think about that thought or what else triggered that thought. So if I had seen a girl drinking a banana smoothie, I would write banana smoothie, girl drinking <laughs> banana smoothie. And that's a really interesting example, but you get the idea. So as soon as you think of something, write it down immediately. Don't let yourself forget it and allow yourself that space. So don't look at that note and don't dwell on it and don't think to yourself, oh my gosh, I have to write this now. Give yourself time and let it go. Revisit that note in a week's time. You might look at it and think, why the hell did I write about a banana smoothie and a girl drinking a banana smoothie? Or <laughs> the flip side of that is it might trigger something else in your mind, subconsciously or not, that you actually thought about when you saw that. And then that's when the elaboration of the writing process will begin. That has actually happened to me very many times. Not, not necessarily a banana, it's <laughs> not necessarily with a banana smoothie, but um, it actually happened in my first poetry and prose book titled Bones. And it was when I had seen a carton of milk. My thought process behind that was just looking at this milk carton and thinking to myself, well, this is on sale. Someone wants to get rid of this because if they don't get rid of it, the use-by date will end and it'll expire. So someone wants to give someone else this opportunity to buy this thing and quickly use it up. And that's where one of the poems came into play for that thought process. <laughs> I'll, I'll actually get that poem now. Let me just find it. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. So it's in my first poetry and prose book titled Bones, and it's on page 59, titled Used by Date. I went to the supermarket and saw milk for half price. I had a closer look. The expiration date was the day after tomorrow. I thought, when people know something is going to end, or the best of it is over, is that why they use it up until it's empty? Maybe that'll happen to you with a banana smoothie thought. See, you just, <laughs> you, you never know. So the first lesson or the first thing that I want to share with you is to write every single thing that you think of down. It doesn't matter what you think of it in that moment, something will trigger it. Something will happen for your creative process to begin flowing. The second thing is to remain really true to the person you are, to remain authentic, be yourself. That's the easiest way to connect with someone because you're not constantly thinking, I have to behave a certain way or I said that last time, I really need to keep that persona up and allow yourself to be vulnerable. In that vulnerability, people will be able to connect with your work. Yeah. The other thing I do is to write about my personal experiences and life experiences. It is, it can be very therapeutic. It can help the writer just as much as it can help the reader. And making that connection, I think is very important for someone like me who is quite sensitive to other people's emotions and wants to ensure other people feel like they're not alone in whatever they're going through. Write about it. And it, it doesn't matter if you're worried about what someone else is going to think because we all have different perspectives and this is yours. Be incredibly passionate about what you're doing, what you're writing. Yeah, so in saying that, I have written about a lot of people who are no longer in my life as well as people who are in my life. And because I'm extremely honest about my experiences and I know that this is just my perspective 
and that other people may believe something different, I feel more comfortable with that. But in saying that, I really hope you can't hear that in the background. <laughs> I had to just close the window in case you could hear the background. Hopefully you still don't. <laughs> um, what was I saying? The other thing to remember is that you're not writing for other people. Yes, you may be writing because you want other people to connect you with your work, but you're actually writing for yourself. And the importance of understanding that is what will help you when you're writing. If you're worried about the skills that you have in writing itself, I would encourage you to read. Do more reading and increase your vocabulary. That will make you more confident as not only a reader, writer, but a speaker as well. On top of that, when you do write and you complete a poem or prose or tale, whatever it is that you're writing, believe in yourself. Don't have that doubt. As soon as you allow yourself to feel that, that's when that really negative heaviness can actually display and be shown through your work. It's very difficult to not have doubt but try not to because again this is okay my battery is going to die I just have to change it now <laughs> be right back <laughs> and we're back <laughs> if you are passionate about your writing that will actually come across in the writing and the work that you present itself so your emotions when you write I think is very important as well I also think as great as it is to have that determination to write as much as you as much as you have in your mind to achieve it's also important to listen to your emotions so if you're feeling angry or upset or you're just not in the mood don't force it because that actually will come across in your writing I would also highly encourage you to get your work professionally edited I always feel more confident about my work after a professional has actually looked at it, gone through it, edited it, provide their comments back to me, and I can then say, great, this makes sense, it's in the correct tense. Uh, I talk about how I found my editor in my self-publishing video. Yeah, I would highly encourage you to get a professional editor to overlook your work if that's something that you can afford and something you actually want. It can also be very challenging and daunting to actually print your work knowing how personal it is and that it's about your life and you've put so much of yourself into the work and now it's completely up for people to scrutinize it and criticize it. But that's why I think what we do is very courageous because it does take a lot to admit your feelings about someone or a certain situation that may have upset you or that you feel very strongly about and have someone look at it and think no or have a completely different perspective <sighs> i don't know if that made sense i would also like to tell you not to worry about the way people interpret your work because i think that's what poetry or writings is all about many of my poems a lot of people have actually come to me saying oh this is so great because it made me feel xyz and when i wrote the poem it was actually about something completely different and i had a different emotion in mind it doesn't happen for all of the poems but Basically what I'm saying here is allow people to have their own perspective. The way I feel about my work is I don't want people to picture my life when they read my work. I want people to read it and relate it to their own life. That's the way that I feel like I really make a connection and I really make a difference to people who are reading my work. I think that's all I can think about, but to sum up, be honest, be authentic, be true to the person you are, believe in your work, be creative and don't be afraid to express yourself the way you want to, <laughs> continue to be determined, but don't allow your goal in mind to completely overwhelm you. Look at the now and if it's not something you want to do right now, don't force it. I think that's it. This is my second poetry and prose book titled X. It's me on the cover. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll read one entry from this book and talk to you about the way I interpreted it and it would be really interesting to hear your perspective and see, see what you thought about it. So let's begin. Okay. I'm going to pick an entry called Social with it, which is on page six. So I'll read it first and then go line by line. The perfect groom and bride a life where he never cried, platform to inform or misguide, rare profoundity she's dignified, neglecting old friends, blatant snide, lingerie showing her backside, symbols and signs, superficial yet glorified, innocent and naive, all starry-eyed, 
gain some weight, get crucified, modify ourselves to feel verified, smiles hiding sinister sides, out to mingle, all preoccupied. Now, I chose that poem because I believe, especially in the 21st century and in this era where social media is so predominant and majority of people are on it and exposed to it. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed by what you can see on social media and feel like your life is crumbling and imperfect because all you see is this idea of perfection. So that was the inspiration behind this particular poem. But I'll go through it line by line. So the perfect groom and bride. No one in any relationship wants to show that they have arguments, that you know they have problems, that anything is going on apart from the relationship being completely perfect. People just don't want to show that. A life where he never cried. So I wanted to make this line about the male perspective because I think it's very easy to it's very easy to automatically assume that only women are emotional and cry. But the reality is men have feelings too and they cry, they feel pain, they feel the same things we do. So I'm, I guess I'm trying to normalize the fact that men also have these emotions and they may not be able to express that socially or on social media because of the way the world thinks about men in general. Platform to inform or misguide. So this line to me was about those ads you see of those celebrities who advertise for these teas and certain diet pills that are actually quite toxic or not very good for younger men and women who may be you know, heavily influenced by this particular celebrity who's talking about this diet pill and you need to get it. But you don't actually know that this person's being paid to advertise for it. So my saying that platform to inform or misguide, people are misled to believe certain things on social media that are not actually accurate or not actually beneficial to your life. And I believe we all have a choice to either inform others, help others, influence others for the better, or misguide them and make them believe something completely different or warped that's not actually real. Rare profoundity, she's dignified. So this line to me is also stemming off the earlier line and it's just basically elaborating on the fact that not many people are willing to be vulnerable online or allow themselves to be shown as someone who is uh, thinks a lot about a particular situation or circumstance that has affected their life. For me personally, I really enjoy doing that because I've noticed a lot of people connect with it and a lot of people don't actually feel comfortable enough to be vulnerable online. So they'll reach out to you and say thank you so much for sharing this because I've been feeling this and I wasn't sure that someone else was. Neglecting old friends, blatant snide. So... <laughs> This one I suppose is quite self-explanatory. It's very easy to feel excluded and be exclusive on social media as well. It's something that I think we all struggle with. Um, yeah. Lingerie showing her backside, symbols and signs superficial yet glorified. Innocent and naive, all starry-eyed. So these three lines, I mean, it all ties in together, the whole paragraph, the whole poem itself, but these three lines in particular, I felt were, were quite closely connected. Again, it's on the elaboration of don't judge a book by its cover, but also what you see isn't necessarily what you get, but all these innocent and naive young men and women are looking at these amazing figures online. And by figures, I mean people, not necessarily the shape of someone's body, though that too. <laughs> look at that and think, I want that, why don't I look like that, why can't I have that, why isn't my life like that? But what I think a lot of people struggle with, myself at times included, is you cannot compare yourself, your body, your personality, your life to anyone else's, because none of us are the same. My body will not look the same as, um, I can't even think of a celebrity. <laughs> My body will not look the same as Taylor Swift in the same dress. We have a completely different body type. She's like 20 centimeters taller than I am. There are a lot of things that people just, it's just easy to not recognize when you're looking at something on a screen versus when you see it in person and when you talk to it and get to know what's really going on. So essentially what those three lines are saying is that it's very easy to look at something and think something and then look at yourself and wonder, well, what's wrong with me? 
but nothing, nothing is wrong with you. Nothing. <laughs> Gain some weight, get crucified, modify ourselves to feel verified. Again, what you see, that you see this beautiful skinny supermodel who everyone adores, she, he, all over your feed and people are adoring him or her. So you feel like because you don't look like that and maybe you're a little bit bigger or you have a curve there and they don't, you automatically think, what's wrong with me? So it's just the same. The whole, this whole poem is just part of the same problem that we all collectively feel, but whether or not we want to admit that to ourselves or each other is a different thing, but that's why I wrote it. So people actually feel connected and can relate to something that someone else is also feeling, the exact same thing. Yeah, gain some weight, get crucified, so you gain a little bit of weight and someone happens to tell you, oh my gosh, is what's going on? You're, you know, last time I saw you, you were, uh -uh, now you're, uh -uh. so there's just this idea of perfection that uh, many people strive to achieve and struggle with when they feel like they're not it. I think some, the flip side of that and something that I've recently come to learn for myself as well is that your body does so much for you that we don't actually recognize how important it is and that we should be grateful for where it's at in its current shape or form because our hearts are still beating, we're still breathing and I think that's the perspective that we all really should be having but it is very difficult. Modify ourselves to feel verified so Again, it's feeling not good enough. It's wanting to change something about yourself because you see that the beauty standard has X, Y, Z and you feel like you're not a part of it and you want to do something about it. Smiles hiding sinister sides. This line was a bit interesting for me to write and I think it goes, it goes off the same theme. It's really the same theme. <laughs> People who present themselves as something completely different, people who are not actually authentic or true to the people that they really are in here and expressing that on their, on their social media. What that line is really saying is you don't know what someone is truly like until you get to know them. No one should be on a pedestal. You should be putting yourself on that pedestal. You should be praising yourself and bettering yourself and wanting to grow and become an even more amazing version of the person that you are. Not look at someone else and think, I want to be that. Let them be that. Let them be themselves. You focus on you because that's the thing that's more important. Uh, the last line, out to mingle, all preoccupied, is what do, what do we all do when we're out? What do we all do, really? I think we're all guilty of it, but it's just something that I think we should all also be mindful of or more mindful of and really make an effort to be a bit less connected to this and much more connected to each other. So, thanks for listening. <laughs> that was a mini breakdown of my poem Social from my Poetry and Prose book X. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, I would love to help you out or encourage you, please leave a message down below and thank you so much for watching.